Yeah, not a... Not too much to say, apart from the fact that I had it over to throw legs around at the YMCA. So, eesh. I've got about three more days worth of school for this semester at least. So, not, uh, not something I love thinking about because i got a lot of work and studying and projects to make sure I have totally finished before I can... You know, totally chill for the winter, but I'll just try not to think about it. At least not for the next hour and a half while I try to break down my hamstrings and quads into the basic fiber of their beings. Hamstrings, of course, is going to be done. Well, it's definitely going to be uh, <coughs> started off with laying hamstring curls. Uh, at this gym, that's just the best hamstring machine that well, that I use. I could do the seated hamstring curl, but something about that one, it just doesn't really hit me that well. I can't. I don't know if it's like the, the machine itself, or maybe I just haven't been adjusting the seat right. There are some seated hamstring curls, which I love, but this one's just kind of... Eh. There is most certainly a difference in hitting a, in like the stimulus of your hamstring from doing laying to seated so for variability's sake I should probably throw some seated in there too but I get such a crazy pump and burn from the laying hamstring curls I think I might just be a little bit more inclined to stick with those so after a few there once I'm warmed up and strong and I feel fresh and I'll be able to throw around the stack for you know so and so amount of reps obviously controlling the first couple when I'm strong you know, get a full range of motion but then once I'm on to, you know, the partials, I'll just burn out until I can barely move. You know, I don't think that's a bad way to go about it. I'd say a few of those and then move on to uh, cable RDLs, kind of jerry-rig a little bit of a setup over there. Uh, I c so RDLs on their own are already kind of funky. It's a kind of tricky movement to be able to actually do correctly and only feel your hamstrings firing but I guess uh, man, it's really just sort of I want to say something you just kind of learn over time but I don't know man, it's just it's just a little bit tricky because your body wants to use your glutes and your hamstring no no it wants to use your glutes and your lower back pretty much the other two big key muscle groups in your posterior chain, you know, things that are helping you pull things up, like in a deadlift. So you kind of have to be acquainted enough with your build, you know, and have a little bit of muscle control to be able to keep your glutes and your lower back loose. I mean, obviously tight enough for safety's sake, but loose enough and not contracting so that your hamstrings are what are really doing all the work. So you can do them with a straight bar or on a Smith machine or with dumbbells, but I never feel it better than when I do it with two cables. Uh, I kind of have to jerry rig a little setup, but we'll uh, we'll get into that later. And then legs or no 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 quads. Quads is just going to be leg extensions primarily. I'm chilling out on squats for a little bit uh, just because I want to make sure my whole little lower pressing system gets back to baseline. Uh, over the past couple of months, I keep squatting real heavy, and then I just keep retweaking my right adductor. And I've just been kind of in a, a loop of like, you know, a couple squat days real heavy. Oh, okay, I can kind of, it's feeling a little sore now. And then take maybe another couple squat days off, then do it again. And it's kind of tweaked. And it's like, you know, it's, a, it's just an endless loop. So. It's, uh, it's literally insane to do the same shit over and over again. So I'll let my uh, I'll let my adductors and whatever else down there comes into play when I do those heavy pressing. Just have a little bit of time to re you know, reorganize whatever repair. Not that I think I really tore anything like that, but it's just a, a bit of a tweak that's a little bit too annoying to ignore. So leg extensions combined with potentially Smith Machine sissy squats but definitely bodyweight sissy squats. I honestly, oh, 
Of course, people get crazy quad pumps doing whatever kind of workouts they do. But when I incorporate leg extensions supersetted into body weight sissy squats, so let's say, you know, 20 reps with a, a really heavy weight for, for you on the leg extension, approaching if not just hitting failure, and then you stand up, you grab onto the machine, and you do some body weight sissy squats. If you really push it, something about the stretch that I can get on my quads when I do them, I mean, it's <laughs> my quads never get more pumped than when I do those. So, apart from the fact that I've got to actually get in there and see how everything feels, I mean, hey, maybe I do those laying hamstring curls and I say, oh, this kind of feels like shit. I don't want to do anything with this. And, you know, I'll, I'll adjust accordingly. But like all my other lifts, going into them, I have a basic framework of a, of a lift that I want to do. But, you know, it's still subject to being influenced by a couple of things. You know, my current state. Maybe I get in there and, fuck, man, maybe my right hamstring feels, like, off. Something about it, it's like real tight and tender. I'm like, oh, dude, I should just let I should let my fucking hamstrings relax, right? And if it's like that, then of course, you no know, hamstrings for me. But that's kind of something that's. It does sound like common knowledge, but even advanced lifters, it's gonna, like me included, it's always good to remind yourself. If something feels off, you are much better, you know, lifting another day uninjured than pushing it ripping your shit off and having to say, well, I'm fucked, you know, I, uh, I'm trying my best to get to, to get to a point of, let's just call it skill, where I can really push every lift, but not so far that I ever hurt myself, you know, that's kind of the, I'd say that's honestly what everybody's training should look like. If this is the realm of intensity, uh, you know, maybe... Obviously, weight is included. You're probably not gonna you know, rip your quads off doing 50 pounds of leg extension, or rip your biceps off doing like 20 pound bicep curls. But let's say just kind of a grading scale of how hard you're pushing it. You know, here is like you're gonna rip your pecs off. So something too too much weight, too much whatever. That's up there. Really, I think this is all about weight. But somewhere a little bit below there is, you know, just about as much as you can handle for a good set without doing any legit damage, right? So you get up to this level of intensity, it's as much as you can do, and you're comfortable doing it, that's where you want to be. This is like, you're not redlining, but you're at 6,000. You know, you're right up there in fifth gear. You don't want to go over, so... Not too much time to dilly dally. I'm, uh, I was fucking sleepy before I actually got up and took my pre and everything else, so I, I kind of delayed the lift a touch. Let's get in there, get warmed up. I got to do a little bit of calves before I actually start uh, hamstrings. Because if I don't do a little bit of calves, then my hamstrings feel a little bit tight. Like as I do the curls, I can kind of feel in like the pit of my knees. Like, oh, that's a little bit uncomfortable. So, a little remedy if that's something that you run into doing hamstrings during hamstrings. Maybe do a little bit of calves beforehand. But enough of that. Let's, uh, let's just get in there. Have to charge this little receiver or whatever. 
but who cares? So, two good sets of hamstring curls done. Honestly, I think I'll probably just do two more. I mean, I'll see how they feel, make sure they're good, but. <coughs> Other than that, I mean, I'm ready to get them with one of quads. I mean, they feel pretty fatigued. And, I mean, once they're fully pumped, that's kind of my cue to say, all right, I think that was good. Not that the pump is the only factor, of course. I need to do good sets to get there. more no already else today Let's get some leg extensions going. Just standing up and straightening my legs all the way. I feel like my hamstrings are trying to come off the bone. <sighs> Try not to get bored. I'm gonna fucking sit here for a while. So, not gonna start off with crazy weight. Um, it, it is the stack, but you can throw the stack around for a few. I know you can. So, first few reps on strong, squeeze. Come right down, really squeeze. But I want to get to the point where I can only do like this much of a partial, if that. So, nothing else to do but get hyped and sit out. You know, I like a machine like this because it doesn't take a lot of thought process. All I got to do is strap in with the belt. Honestly, I, mean, I could just close my eyes and not think about anything. Just go, you get what I'm saying? So, there's a simplicity that comes with machines that I feel makes it very easy to seriously target whatever you're hitting. You know, like if I'm doing a compound movement like squats, uh, I feel like I'm hitting my legs with a sledgehammer. A lot of power, of course, but I'm kind of hitting a large area, you know? Whereas with a machine, it's like I'm using a pickaxe. Same amount of force, but all directed on just one tiny spot. So I'll probably just splice through the next few. I'll make sure they're good, don't worry. Actually, I don't want it to be good for you. I want it to be good for me. What am I even talking about? Let's repeat that a couple times. Oh! <sighs> 
Oh, fuck. Okay. Part of me wants to just sit here and try to do as many sets as I can fucking muster. I'll call in a few, but I just want to keep going. Okay, let's just do one more of these. Huh. Oh. been a while since I've done a straight up leg extension marathon. I like that. Let's go check the pump and roll. They're about to close, so good timing. All right, I forgot to pack all my uh, short shorts. So regular basketball shorts will have to suffice for the pump check. But what was that? Maybe six sets of leg extensions, five or six? Four sets of hamstring curls. Certainly a basic leg day. Will not disagree with you on that point. But I'd call that pretty fucking effective. Holy shit. <laughs> and of course the pump also speaks for itself. So I almost don't even have a reason to vouch for it. Oh my goodness. I don't even have a calf pump. And they're already fucking veiny. Nice. You're not really going to catch me walking around just in straight up shorts, unless maybe it's summertime, but don't worry. It's not because of a lack of quads. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, let's pull these things up and get a better look at them. These are actually my dad's shorts. I didn't have any, so I just fucking stole, from, stole some from him. <sighs> oh, yeah. I mean, fuck, dude. That's not an awful lower half. Not even a little bit. Eesh. Got some calf action poking around. No calves today, but I will definitely get them going tomorrow. Ooh. Let's get a little more of a fucking zoom in down there. Obviously, not even close to that level, but. Ah. <laughs> still, still, dude. God, I love fucking having a leg pump. I don't know if I understand you guys. How could you not hit legs? I know that you guys are still in the general lifting enthusiast population so that means that all standard stereotypes are gonna apply to you so maybe I should post another uh, YouTube poll just to get some Intel but how often are you skipping legs and in a worst-case scenario if you can count on one hand the amount of times that you have hit legs you know in the last fuck dude few months yeesh oh man and I know you some of you guys are out there too because all <laughs> jokes are not just originated out of nowhere for no fucking reason you know the reason people joke about that is because it's fucking true yeesh now if you're a genetic freak and your legs are just naturally fucking huge and proportionate then guess what 
Hey man, you're in the fucking minority. You get special privileges to skip legs. But if you're like the rest of us, and you want everything to be pretty much lined up together, uh, I definitely think my legs are a little bit behind relative to my whole build. But of course, that's why I'm fucking hitting them, you know? If I thought they were as overdeveloped as my shoulders are starting to get, then I'd, you know, take some off and only do them every so often just to make sure I keep the gears spinning. But basic premise, dude, <laughs> if, you st if you tell me that you skipped your leg day or you tell me some shit like, oh, today was supposed to be leg day, but I mean, <laughs> unless you got a good reason, I'm just going to listen to that and say, yikes. I might not say that in my head, but that's what I'm thinking for sure. Let's roll. Let's get out of here. All right, so that was a good leg day. One thing that I've kind of been thinking about with quads, and it's a little bit of a... I feel like it's a little bit of a conflict of... Maybe not mentalities, but... Let's call it techniques, because it's not only really philosophy, because it's actually, you know, something that we're practicing and actually physically doing. So, when it comes to quads, it's a very taxing muscle group. And I kind of feel like there's two very drastic ways of hitting it. Uh, I feel pretty comfortable with my style of training hamstrings. So I don't really have a lot of internal, like, uh, you know, I don't want to say conflicts again, but, you know, internal thoughts swaying back and forth on different kinds of training for hamstrings. You know, I like my, uh, you know, heavy sets with partials and then you know, go until I can't go anymore, stuff like that. And I've gotten some pretty good hamstring development from it, so I think I'll keep it up. But with quads, uh, part of me thinks I should hit quads with a little bit more volume. And I'll explain why I think this. So, let's take two scenarios. One, you know, let's say I warm up, uh, maybe I do a couple working sets of leg extensions, my quads are very warm, you know, I am ready to do some squats. So, what would the better scenario be? Maybe one set of like, five plates for, you know, like 10, and then, you know, there's no chance I could really do a set with that same intensity again, just because, you know, the recoverability of my quads in the workout, they're just not going to get back to that strength level. You know, if I do five plates for 10 and that's, and that last rep is RPE 10, it's my max intensity. I cannot do another one or better yet. I just you know, actually hit failure and then have to re-rack it. I couldn't get even six reps if I tried that set again, just because it did so much damage. So that's kind of one method of squats that I've done. And another that I've kind of gone through is rather than trying to push it to the absolute limit weight wise like that, obviously within a working set range, you know, I've done quad days where instead of trying to push the squat going crazy, I'd be a little bit more conservative with it. I do a weight that I can actually handle and let's say I do like four plates for, obviously that doesn't feel like a big difference, four versus five, but it is a pretty big difference. A hundred more pounds on your back is very substantial. So let's say I could do four plates or even go as low as three plates, you know, go even lighter. And instead of just doing that one crazy set, you know, maybe do four or five higher volume sets, like maybe failure-ish at about 15 reps, you know, and then re-rack it, take a few minutes, and be able to recover enough to do it again. So, part of me thinks, and not just because of, like, things that I've kind of experienced, but just listening to real freaks, you know, I'm talking, like, watching older uh, lifters, hearing what they have to talk about quad training, and you know, in a bodybuilding context for muscle growth, they don't really give a shit about the weight. For the most part, a lot of, uh, except for when they want to show off for like a training clip or like a training video or stuff, a lot of those guys who have monstrous fucking legs, I'm talking old open bodybuilder dudes, you know, they were doing lighter weight, higher reps, really going for 
more of a burn and I've kind of heard the same thing so I'm starting to think I should kind of change the way that I go about my quad training and make it a little bit more of a kind of even output of exertion I feel like the way that I kind of naturally like to train is I get warmed up of course and then every set I'm trying to push it to the limit high s intensity set take a second high s intensity take it take a little bit like that like every set is just like right there on the limit but I think I'll be able to get more work done on my quads if you know maybe I chill out with the actual physical strain of the sets like in terms of their weight and everything else and maybe be a bit more methodical so I'm starting to think that for quads I may benefit more so from lighter squeezing reps kind of higher volume really burning kind of sets kind of stuff rather than you know my kind of super heavy method you know because I mean strong quads are not inherently big quads you know I don't want to say any slander or anything like that but in the general scheme of uh, like size you know we've got absolute freaks and of course they're strong if you have a lot of muscle you are strong you can physically move a lot of weight mass moves to mass I believe that wholeheartedly but you know we got dudes like Larry wheels or a ton of other power lifters he just kind of comes to mind and like like he's got big legs of course he's a total freak but you wouldn't necessarily guess purely by looking at his legs that that dude can squat like 900 pounds you know so I need I think I need to kind of have a little bit of a internal talk with myself and sort of say all right man like it's cool throwing around a lot of weight I know you like it but I think you're better off going a little bit more conservative with it and doing these sets that really burn I kind of think that subconsciously I prefer doing my really heavy sets with quads like trying to do really heavy leg extensions and my really heavy squats because it's easier for me to hit failure because it's not so much of an endurance test right for me to do a set of squats where it's heavy enough that I fail at eight reps that's a little bit easier for me than to do a set of squats where I would fail at like 20 reps and I'm not just saying like an endurance test, like I do the set and like halfway through it, I'm like, <gasps> like I can't breathe. <clears throat> I'm just talking about the fucking pain that a long squeezing set of quads gives you. So I think it's almost a situation where it's like, you know what you don't want to do. And that just happens to be exactly what you should do. You know, you're fucking laying down at home. Oh, I don't want to do my fucking homework. But I should, like some shit like that. So I think I need to, I think I may need to change my style up. Maybe I'll watch some old <clears throat> quad training videos and get some, uh, get some new material in my mind. I'm starting to think I should also throw some lunges in. That would pretty much fit the, demo, the demographic of the kind of sets that I'm thinking about. Very long, strenuous, burning sets. I think that'd be good for me. But then again, I don't have zero quads. I've clearly been doing something. So, you know, every time I kind of talk about like, oh, I really want to kind of change up my style of this. Uh, it's pr Let's say I do change it up and it is much better. I'm definitely going to make a little more gains if the training is, you know, better stimulus. But as long as you go in the gym and you go hard and you're doing a reasonably formatted workout, it's not like you can do one where you go in, you really push it, you can feel your quads the day after, and like walking down the steps of the gym, you actually gotta hold on to the handrail for real. Now, if you're doing shit like that, you're still gonna be on the path towards progress. As long as you couple that training with hitting your protein and calories, plus at least a decent night's sleep. I'm kind of an asshole about that, and I'm really only, cu only uh, cutting myself short by not making sure I get my solid eight hours a night but you gotta you gotta man you know speaking of that I used to do melatonin for a while I don't think it really did anything for me 
I think what I really ought to do is just fucking stay away from blue light, figure out how to detach myself from my phone and, you know, kind of just go to sleep with my thoughts. And fuck, man, for some people, that could be rough. So, you know, maybe, uh, maybe you gotta kind of train your mind as well if you're dealing with any kind of internal mumbo jumbo. Anything that's kind of clouding your mental state, uh, I mean, in a training context, your results will be affected, you know? Where the mind goes, the body follows. I believe that with every fiber of my freaking being. You know? So if in your mind you feel like a chump, guess what, man? You're going to act like one. So fake it till you make it, dog. Put a smile on. Get in the gym. Fucking... If you're not hyped up, fucking pretend you're hyped up. And eventually, honestly, just going through that little motion, you'll start getting excited for real, you know? So, I keep I keep referencing this, but if right now you're in the it's so over mentality, don't worry, man. Don't worry, just try to keep yourself on track, keep moving, and soon enough you're gonna be like, we're so back. I gotta stop saying that. I feel like I say that every third video. Too true, though too freaking true so I get home get some grub drink a fuck ton of water plus electrolytes I don't have any silo 9 with me at home little electrolyte amino acid blend which I do like so I'll have to get some kind of electrolyte packet but last part of this little post workout rant you are not well hydrated I guarantee it I can almost guarantee it. I know you, you don't have a jug full of fucking electrolytes every day and you're just constantly sipping on it, dude. You know. Oh, but I mean, I had half my hydro flask today. What the fuck? Not enough. I'm serious. You will notice a difference when you're fully hydrated. No more random ass cramps. No headaches. Better training. Even if you're not eating in a crazy surplus. If you're fully saturated with all your magnesium and potassium and calcium and, you know, everything else under... Oh, holy fuck! Jesus Christ. That guy just ran a stop sign and almost killed me. Actually, I probably went okay. would have been okay, but fucking hell, man. If I was prone to insane road rage, I could definitely foresee following this type of dude. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Be careful. Be fucking careful, man. Even if you're on top of everything, people can just run out of the stop sign and smack you. That would have been fucked. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh my god. Well, that's enough near crash scares for one day. Get home if you're doing some random bullshit. Get your pre in your system. If you're lifting in a while, get a big ass meal in you full of carbs. If you want to get some treats in there too, a little bit of sugars, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame you. In fact, I might even encourage it, honestly. Even when I'm cutting down and I'm in the calorie deficit, pre-workout, I want a little treat. You know, I want some fucking uh, I'll do a bag of Skittles pre-workout, even when I'm dieting. Because it's not oh crap, dude, you're eating Skittles, you're gonna you're not in deficit, you're not dieting at all. That's just fifty grams of carbs pretty easily digestible carbs which you know they're gonna spike spike it's gonna spike my blood sugar help me have a better workout you know so I, uh, we're really just hitting all sorts of topics now but I think that's a perfect time to end it so like I said I'm gonna get home worry about all the school shit that I've put off until the very last minute Get ready for cardio in the morning after a good night's rest, and then tomorrow's going to be chest. So, not sure where I'm going to go for that, but I can guarantee it's going to be a freaky-ass pump. So, I will see you next time.